OnlyFans, I think, is a step along this path because what OnlyFans offers yeah, definitely. is not just pornography. It offers a parasocial relationship. It gives the impression to yeah. customers that this woman cares about them, remembers his birthday, remembers his children's names, all of this stuff. And But it's yeah. all obviously a mirage and it's one that's purchased. And that's something you guys have to understand if you're a man and you're participating in this whole only fans thing it is a mirage it's purchase it's not real i mean i understand you know the pandemic came and everybody was on lockdown and you know you were forced to just be on your phone and try to get attention that way and validation that way but you know this only fans thing is is a completely different level it is helping to lead to the destruction of a lot of women not just today but in their future so if you're a guy and you're watching this, you know, you need to think about that because you're on there because you're trying to get your own type of fix from it. But are you really thinking about the long term effects that it's having as a whole? And it, it, it com yeah. it's completely the wrong yeah, well, and structure. And for that's, everyone. Right. Well, and that that's narcissistic exploitation on the part of the females with antisocial personality traits and often, what would you say, aided and embedded by quasi-psychopathic pimps, electronic pimps. And, you know, those only fan women that you made a very good point there, those are actually androids, right? Because they're not women. Now you might say, what the hell are you talking about, Dr. Peterson? Obviously they're women. It's like, no, they're not. They're machine women hybrids. And the machine is the technology that can broadcast their image to millions of people. So you're not a woman anymore if you're in a million men's bedrooms at the same time. That's a very interesting point. It actually makes perfect sense. You know, we live in such a society that's impersonal. Everything has become just flat out impersonal. And I mean, you can't be a real woman if you're in the bed. <laughs> The bedrooms of thousands of men i mean that that's crazy i never really thought about it like that but as always you can count on uh jordan peterson to make you think about things you're a woman machine hybrid now it's virtualized obviously because it's two-dimensional and it's not embodied in the form of a robot but the idea that that's not an android means that you're an idiot that's what it means it's obviously an android and there, there is definitely that form of parasitism on the female part. You know, these women have embodied capital. That's a good way of thinking about it. So they're young. They don't have economic resources, but they're young and beautiful. And that's an economic resource. Make Seriously, young and beautiful. That's why a lot of these young girls, as soon as they turn 18, they're just jumping right head first into this OnlyFans thing. Make no mistake about it. In fact, it's the most, well, it's the highest possible form of wealth. This is another thing that the Marxist types get real wrong with their economic analysis, because if you took, let's say, a hyper-rich 80-year-old woman, and you said, well, you give away 99% of your fortune, and now you inhabit the body that you had when you were 20, and then we could add to that the possibility of being stellarly beautiful, the probability that that woman would trade everything she has for that opportunity, you know, assuming she hasn't become disenamored of life, is extraordinarily high. And so that also means that on the female side, and this is happening continually, female uh, exploitation can take place with regard to men, just like male exploitation takes place with regard to women. And you know, I totally agree with that. And that example that he gave, I think that all women understand that they're beauty is their most valuable asset that's why they flaunt it around all the time and they use it to finesse men to get money to you know do whatever like you know on this only fans but the thing is is they think that it lasts forever they they think that it lasts forever if you would ask one of them do you think you're going to be as hot at 35 as you are at 25 they would all say of course even better even hotter so um, this whole two-sided coin of taking advantage. Yes, men can take advantage of women and, and women definitely can take advantage of 
uh, men. And right now on this OnlyFans thing, I think it's a bit of both, but I think it's more so on women um, because the guys are the ones coming out of their pockets, <laughs> you know, uh, paying all the money. Those women are not doing other women a favor either by monopolizing the marketplace, let's say. No. I think that one of the ways in which women are hurt by the pretense that is widely practiced that men and women are psychologically the same and that male and female sexuality is the same is that it's very easy for a young, beautiful woman to mistake male sexual desire for high regard and to, and to, I think that really there are two parallel tracks when it comes to male sexual desire for women. There is the, the short term and the long term, and they are not at all the same. And that being very highly desired on the short term track does not necessarily translate into being very high, highly desired on the long term track. In fact, sometimes quite the opposite. She actually made two points there. Um, this one right here, she's talking about the long term versus the short term and like i mentioned earlier a lot of women think that they will be just as hot at 35 as they are at 25 um so that's something that women need to understand and understand that window um, because you might be attractive and you might look hot at 35 but that doesn't mean that you have the same options you did at 25 and then the um other thing that she was talking about um the categories that that men put women in i mean it's basically just two categories it's the fun only zone and then it's the commitment zone and what women need to understand is that just because a man has sex with you that doesn't mean that he wants to commit to you even if he tells you all these things before he has sex with you it doesn't mean that he wants to commit to you even if he says i want to commit to you i want to marry you all these things men will say pretty much anything to sleep with women it is what it is and you guys have to understand that but because you um equate the the thought of commitment to sex what well, well i just put it this way for a woman to have sex with any guy um she has to have some type of feeling for him she has to like him enough she has to see a possibility of a future or something like that there has to be something most women are just not gonna go out there and just sleep with men just to sleep with men right but men are not the same way we don't think the same way does that mean that all men just go out there and just take advantage of women and just sleep with them and lie to them some do and they shouldn't do that just be honest about what it is you got going on but the fact is, is that men and women just, we are just not the same when it comes to that. And the sooner women can understand these two points that she made, I think they'll be better off. We don't think the same as men and women. And women have to acknowledge the fact that they only have a, a, a small window where they're most valuable in the sexual marketplace. It has nothing to do with who you are as a person. You could be a great person. But the fact is, in the sexual marketplace, you only have a certain amount of value when you're at a certain age. It is what it is. I mean, you can't be mad at that. Uh, it's how our creator made us, so it's just how men are. And I think that the main error that women are making with thinking that OnlyFans is a, is a quick buck, not only is the fact that OnlyFans is enormously unequal, and actually there are very few people on it who are making any real money and generally the ones who are making lots of money were, of course, already, of were already famous before they joined the platform and so on. It's also the fact that there is, the internet is forever and these images are out there and it damages your long-term yeah. mating prospects to have been on OnlyFans. And actually, I mean, it is clearly the case that female beauty is an incredibly valuable resource. But I, I think maybe the way in which it, it needs to be understood distinctly from economic power is it is to some extent vicarious. You can acquire enormous power as a beautiful woman through access to typically male political and economic power. Through the man's money, through the men that are like paying for OnlyFans. And they showed a picture of Cardi B. She's definitely a reason why a lot of women jumped on there and got on there. And it's it's always amazing to me that people actually follow her because she is an, is an admitted stripper she's 
admitted that she's used men for money and all these things and it's just amazing to me how women just follow her uh, down this rabbit hole because you know women are in competition with other women women tend to want what other women have whether it's a material thing or even the man or the type of man that they have women are in competition with each other in that way women want to emulate celebrities they think that they know the celebrity they think that the celebrity cares about them these people don't care anything about these ladies but these women follow it and they think that this is like their ticket to all this money the average woman isn't isn't even making a lot of money on only fans but the average woman will still have the same stigma as the woman that made money on only fans because men are never going to want to commit to women that are involved in any kind of sex work were involved in any kind of sex work um champion sex work it's just not a good look there's no way that a man can take that woman home to meet his mom it's not respectable it's not something that you want your kids to be involved with have to deal with in the future or anything like that so a lot of these women are just basically shooting themselves in the foot and killing their opportunities if they're young they're wasting time and you know they're wasting their, their most uh, valuable asset in the dating marketplace and then you have older women that are jumping on there too and they think that that's gonna you know help them all of a sudden find the prince charming even though they're past their most valuable asset time so a lot of women are just kind of delusional with this whole thing they're looking at everything in short term they rarely look at things in the long term it's all based in like emotions and what i want to do right now and i don't care about the future i'll deal with it when it comes but it doesn't last forever. If you're able to secure a very high status husband, for instance, and he commits to you for life, you've translated your beauty into real and lasting power. If you're not able to do that, then you will very quickly, you know, age 35, age 40, age out of having any access to that kind of power. And then you will potentially be paying the cost later down the line. So there are some women who've become very wealthy on OnlyFans. But in general, I would say that it's very, very poor strategy. And, uh, you know, as ever, it is presented as a kind of short-term boon. Yeah, well, and it, it suffers from the same Pareto distribution problem as any productive enterprise, creative enterprise, which is a small minority of people will rake in all the money, like a tiny, tiny proportion. It'll be a tenth of 1%. They'll make a spectacular amount of money and everyone else will strive away in the dirt scrabbling away for virtually nothing. And then, as you said, even those women who have managed to make that successful are uh, dooming themselves in all likelihood to remaining only attractive to psychopathic and exploitative males.